So we're still working on our fuel tanks, um, but we've had a bit of a delay with the sandblasting. There's been a couple of trawlers come in that needed quite a bit of sandblasting work done, um, so we've been bumped. So um, we are getting on with another fairly sort of chunky engineering job that we had to just, just get done. It's one of those things that's been sort of pushed down the list. Um, but I've got a weekend free that I didn't expect, so we're going to knock it out. Um, what I need to do is build a radar mast. So I'll show you my little, this is my detailed 3D mock-up that I've created with a pencil. Um, I'll show you what I'm working on and, uh, and then we'll get stuck into the build. So this here is essentially what I'm gonna build. Um, basically this is the main sort of tower, I suppose you could call it, is uh, a piece of um, round pipe cut in half with a piece of 100 mil added in this dimension here. So it's, it'll end up becoming like an oval. Um, these these wings here, this is the, the wing down the bottom here, so it's exactly the same sort of thing, a smaller piece of pipe cut in half with a tapered um, piece of steel welded into the centre, um, so they get smaller and smaller as they go. Um, I'm going to weld a flat plate on the top and there'll be a flat plate on each end of these. Um, this radar mount here is, is a flat plate of stainless that goes out uh, forward like that and then it'll have a couple of um, like gussets underneath just to, to give it some rigidity and so on. Um, and then finally these little things that you can sort of see sticking up here on the end of these wings They sort of come out one maybe out about here and one sort of out here somewhere um, Are these things so sorry uh, are these things here. So it's basically just a, a, um, a male uh, BSP fitting um, I think a three-quarter inch BSP fitting um, I'm just going to basically weld those onto the top um, And then if I'm not using them I'll chuck a bung on it and if I am using it I'll, I'll put an aerial or a AIS or whatever it is that happened to be using that um, given that it's a three-quarter BSP, it's pretty pretty common, and if I need to make an adapter to go to NPT or some other thread, then, then I can pretty easily. Um, so this basic layout, the whole thing, just to clarify, the whole thing is actually going to be welded to the roof of the wheelhouse. I was originally, I thought about welding, and then I got scared and thought, no, I'll never be able to get my welder up there. I'll have to bolt it, and then I thought about that, and I thought, no, that's, that's a silly idea. No, I need to weld it. It has to be done right. So um, we're going to uh, make this all today. Um, or today and tomorrow and then um, we'll drag it up uh, when I've got a, a spare set of hands to help me we'll drag it up and um, get the welder up the top there and weld it onto the roof um, but, it, but this weekend the goal is to get this built get it sandblasted inside and out and painted um, so you actually see us how we sandblast inside pipes and things like that when we build this type of stuff um, because we want to make sure everything's painted so we don't have any issues with rust um, down the track so this basic layout will give us room for um, one large open array radar if we choose to have one or a, a small um, you know, circular closed array. It'll give us room for four aerials and additional uh, enough space to add more if we need it. Um, if we need to put lights out the wing or up the, up the tower here, we can easily do that later. Um, and then also on the top of the tower here, there'll be a big plate um, that we can stick um, uh, like satellite, um, satellite dishes and things like that on the top. So if we ever need to do any, um, any satellite work, we've got the space to do it. We don't have to redesign anything later on down the track. So um, it's a pretty simple design, but I think it gives us quite a bit of versatility. So um, yeah, we'll get stuck in and we'll start making it. Right, so that's our main beam for the, um, this is our main beam for the radar. So this, I, don't, I have no idea what diameter it is, maybe, five inch, something like that. Um, I'm going to, uh, I just saw it at the scrapyard and I thought that's pretty good, that'll do. Um, so what my plan is, is mark all of this out and this is gonna become our main, our main tower for the radar. So it's pretty thick wall, it's gotta be at least six mil or so. Um, and I've got some six mil flat bar that we're gonna use to make it into an oval. So let's get into cutting this as an oval. So I have um, the steel cut. Uh, this is going to become the sides of the main tower. Um, so yeah, let's, I suppose, assemble it all and start welding it. So this is part one um, of the two, well, one part of the two pieces that are going to form the tower. So basically, you got your half round that we cut at, the half round that we cut at earlier, piece of 100 mil by six mil flat bar. Those two are going to be welded together, and then we're going to make an exact copy of that. It's going to get welded to this side here and that, that basically creates an oval tower. So right now I'm just gonna run down and do a double continuous weld. So I'll weld on this side, flip it over, and then weld on the other side. Get a double, double continuous all the way down there and I'll do the same on the other piece as well.
this is the uh, first half welded up so you can sort of see there's a bead all the way along there now um, I did it in a few goes just to try and minimize the warping it seems to be pretty straight I'm pretty happy with that so that's um, one of the continuous welds so I'll, I'll flip that over and do the other side um, but before I get into that what I want to do so this is this piece of pipe here is galvanized so I don't have to stress too much about that with rust and things like that this one here is just mild steel um, so this one will rust and same with the same with the, the weld line um, so what I need to do um, is sandblast this now um, because it's going to be very difficult to get into there and sandblasting it later so I'm going to sandblast it now I'm also going to sandblast uh, that flat piece of steel there um, because that forms that there's the other half just sitting there those two form the other part of this tower um, so yeah let's get into blasting them so we can get it painted later on so as you can see I haven't learnt my lesson with splatter um, so this is the inside of the tube um, I'm basically just going to give this a so I know that I've, I know why I've done this, like I had my setting set really quite high because I wanted to really melt into the steel, knowing with high wire speed etc, knowing that I'd probably get quite a bit of splatter. Um, I didn't think it would be this much, but um, it really doesn't matter because it's the inside of the tube. I am going to flapper this up and like just clean off all of that slag and, and so on, um, but yeah like it, it probably could have been prettier, but overall I'm happy with the weld, like you can kind of see all the way along, it's basically the same all the way along. So gives you an idea what it sort of looks like um, yeah it's a fairly big chunky weld this is one I did earlier on the other pipe um, that's all been sandblasted so it's kind of what it comes up like so um, that's partly why I'm not really that stressed about you know it looking absolutely perfect I'd rather this was just you know ridiculously strong and, and so on so uh, yeah so this is part one part two now I've got to join the tool, clean this one up and then join the two of them together Nemesis metal warping has happened. It's not really that bad, and I thought it would probably happen. So uh, I have a plan. So what I did, so this table was an inch thick solid steel, so it's pretty heavy, and uh, it conducts heat really well. So in order to stop warping, you need to kind of take the heat out of the metal. Um, and one of the thoughts I had was if I clamped it to this bench, it would sort of suck the heat from the back of the weld out of the work and into the bench, so to warm the bench up. Um, and it seems to have done that pretty well, but there's still a little bit of residual bending that I have to deal with. Um, if this was alloy, you could just whack it with a hammer and it would you could just do whatever you want with it. But it's steel, so it's quite stiff. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and bend it with heat, um, but I'm gonna basically weld the back of it. So, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this bends that way. So there's a, there's a dip in it. So this is lower than the ends, if you, if you measure it that way. Um, I've welded it on one side all the way along, so what I'm going to do now is clamp this flat piece to the bench to get that as straight as absolutely possible, and then weld that back edge, and, and I'm hoping the same in reverse will happen, like the heat will get sucked out of it and in, back into the bench, um, but we'll just see how we go, we'll give it a shot. Here's a great example of the bend, so I've got this end clamped down pretty tight. Look at that. So that's flush against the bench. If you look over here, you got that fairly chunky gap however that's what I was hoping for so I'm going to press that right down like that and clamp the bejeebas out of it I'm going to V this edge all the way along here so there's obviously a bit of gap there that's why you can see the old weld sort of coming through so I'm going to V out god I hate welding galvanized look at all that crap on it anyway I'll V this edge out and I'll run a nice weld all the way down the edge there and hopefully that'll bend it the opposite way so it should end up relatively straight so you can see that it's far from fully welded it's only like a few welds on it and there's lots of open open like veed out grinded area to weld and so on but the thing that i'm really stoked about come around this way If you have a look all the way down the length of that, it's almost perfectly straight. A wee bit hard to see on the screen. But that's pretty much straightened it out, doing those little few blips like that. So what I'm going to do is do exactly the same to the other one, get that nice and straight as well. Um, and then I'm going to weld the two of them together, and then I'll, I'll finish off the last of that welding when the two of them are mated together. Well, 
like this where you've got like two panels butt to, butted together but instead of using a well this one was a was an old disc but you can sort of see the end of it has gone basically square I like to use discs that are a bit sort of worn down and knackered because normally they've got a really fine edge on them and you can dig that right in and get a really good V so it's a um, fast and easy way of getting a beat out well Nah, this is cool. This is cool. I'm really looking forward to this because I've been wanting to build this thing for like two years now. And I've had it in my head for about two years. So it's pretty neat to finally start making something. New, new gloves and everything. New gloves. Jeez, you should see the old one. Yeah, I got some, um, I, I keep killing gloves. And, um, and it's because I keep, oh, that's really warm. I keep killing gloves and it's because I grind with them. And it's always the same spot where is it on the left hand glove this finger always gets ripped open at the top there so my gloves are like in perfect condition except for this one destroyed finger basically and um yeah it keeps setting me on fire so hopefully these are going to fit now that i've straightened them up That pipe, so these two halves are 40 kgs, I think they said. Um, and then this, I don't know, is probably five or six kgs, maybe for both of those, I guess. Wow. Pretty close. That is really good. Look at that. got to square the end off. Um, I've got to do that on both ends. So I'm going to start with the top here, or what, it, what currently is the top. Trim that off so that it's flush. Um, flip it up and do exactly the same on the bottom. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because that gives me essentially a um, like a fixed position that I could always sort of rock the the mast back onto being the same angle every time. If that makes sense, that's what I'm hoping. So uh, let's get into it. We'll cut this. Um, we'll yeah figure out how we're going to mark this, and then we'll trim it up flat. Um, once we've done that, uh, I've then got to run some welds around it, um, and uh, yeah, so that's yeah, let's get stuck into it. I don't have a laser level or anything like that, um, so kind of winging it and take my best guess at creating a fairly flat and straight surface. Not too stressed because when I go to mount it on the roof, I'm going to like be using levels and so on to trim it up. So if I have to grind a little smidge off a corner or whatever to get it spot on I will but for now this is basically I think about as close as I'm gonna get let's give it a go see if it works it's ever so slightly off square so if I was to stick it like just straight onto the base like this and, and weld it in it would be slightly off to one side um, however again that's not really the end of the world because I'm gonna you know be leveling it up and all that sort of stuff and if and it's it's really close so it's probably got maybe a one mil gap so if i leveled it up i'd have touching on one side or one mil gap on the other that's easy enough to fill up with weld um the other thought i had is i'm actually thinking of uh plasmaing a hole through the top of the wheelhouse and actually sliding this through maybe half an inch something like that um the reason i'm thinking of doing that 
is because then I can do a double continuous around the bottom and a double continuous around the top rather than just welding it on the top. Um, and it also means that I'll have a, a massive big hole to get all of the cabling up and down so if something changes in five years time and I want to add something, it's a piece of cake, I can pretty much put my hand all the way up the radar mast. Um, yeah, whereas if I was to just do a little you know, wee hole or something like that in the roof, um, it starts to become a real problem later on. So yeah, just trying to get rid of some problems into the future um, by, by designing them out now. This is where we left off. Uh, so at the end of the day yesterday, we'd managed to get the main tower built. So um, it's 50% uh, of it's welded up fully and then the rest of it is tacked together. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and then we're gonna weld it up fully um, a bit later on. Okay, so the bottom's all trimmed up. I haven't done the top yet, I'll do that soon. Um, but I've made a little, uh, just a holder type thing, clamped up a holder on my bench so that I've um, able to just sit the uh, tower into that position all the time. So what my plan is, come around the front of the tower, I'm going to start doing the um, the wings that go out either side. So let's go have a, have a bit of a hunt, see what sort of steel we've got to use. So I found this bit here. Um, it's a piece of, I don't know, six metre long, uh, two inch or 50 millimetre pipe. Um, it's thick wall, so uh, I'll start measuring this out and chop it up. Um, there's a couple of design things that I need to factor in. So the wings basically hold all of our aerials and antenna and that sort of thing, so AIS and, and whatnot. Um, what I need to factor in is is for long range Wi-Fi, so when I'm saying long range Wi-Fi I'm talking maybe up to 20 kilometres, um, you get the best signal when you have, um, from what I've been told, I'm not an expert in this, but you get the best signal from when you have um, two aerials separated by a reasonable distance because of the, so mo 4, 4G modems work on a MIMO princess, multi in, multi out, and having two aerials, so one in, one out type thing, um, is what I originally thought it was, but it's not that. Um, I don't quite understand the science behind it. Um, there's, I'm sure there's people out there that know it a lot better than I do, but basically having two aerials and having them separated gives you a much better signal propagation. Um, so one of the things, I've been talking to a, um, a guy in South Africa who's pretty switched on with this stuff, and he was saying that um, with your aerials, you want to try and have them at least two metres apart. Um, I did think about putting them on the side of the wheelhouse roof, so one on either side, so it'll be about four and a half metres apart, but they're not going to be very high and there'll be a lot of stuff in between them, so I decided not to do that. So I'm going to stick them on the wings of the radar mast, um, and I'm going to build the wings relatively wide, so they'll be about probably two and a half metres wide tops. Um, so each one's going to be, um, yeah, a bit over, well, just a bit over four feet each. Um, so it also gives us uh, the ability to put a lot more aerials up there if we ever need to in the future as well. Um, so that's what this pipe that I'm about to cut, that's what this is for. So two halves are now cut, so these are going to form our wings. Um, so we'll start putting them together and see what sort of um, layout looks right. This is the approximate layout I'm thinking. So I've got a 50mm gap at this end here, I've just tacked a couple of bits of steel in just to hold it, and then a 100mm gap at that end. Um, so if you look down the length of it, you can kind of see it gets obviously progressively bigger and bigger. So what I'm thinking is, um, I'm just trying to figure out how and when I'm going to sandblast so I make sure I get all of the different bits. So I'm thinking I'll probably actually sandblast these as two separate halves because um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get into all of the areas once it's all welded up. Like I'll weld one side, I just don't think I'm going to be able to get up into these top corners and that sort of thing easily enough. So I'll blast them as they are, I'll weld the bottom in um, and I'll blast the bottom of that. Uh, and then I will blast the steel that's going to be welded in. So the only bit that is unwelded will be the, the weld itself. Um, sorry, the only bit that's unsandblast will be the weld itself. So um, what all of that means is that I can throw a roller down there and get a decent amount of paint in before I assemble the whole thing together. So it's pretty windy, so I apologise if there's any wind noise. Um, but this is what we start with. So the inside is uh, pretty rusty, pretty gross. It's pretty similar to the outside, I suppose. Um, you can sort of see these like nobules of rust or whatever you call them. All of that's got to come off. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to blast one, flip over and blast the other. So I'll just do the inside. I'm not worried about the outside for now, because um, that can all get done later. And uh, yeah, so then we'll be able to start getting these welded together.
a couple of minutes of blasting and that's what you're left with so it's pretty clean steel on the inside now compared to what it used to be on the outside it's basically a before and after if you want So this is the first wing partially built. Have you have you had this on on screen that like on the top of the roof? Sorry, say it again. Have you had this? Yeah. 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 So yeah. And then this is the mast. So it's quite floating. Yeah. Well, I can probably it can maybe straight. No, it's probably it's no, better. No, it's great. It's, it's better having it slip. Yeah. 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 I, like I just, up. I didn't know what to, I just winged it, I just guessed it. <laughs> you winged it? Oh. Winged it. <laughs> so, yeah, so that'll go up there. Dane's just explained that he's going to cut this on a, so it sort of sits backwards, so it has sort of more of an angle, it's not straight on, so it doesn't yeah. look sort of stupid. So it doesn't sit like spreaders, how they just go <laughs> yeah. straight out either side, it'll because sit. Because you need to stay with the theme of that kind of line, yeah. the line, the, the yeah. stuff. But he's also just explained to me that when he cuts, this bit, he's got a line here, I don't know if you can see it, but he's going to cut it so it angles round and that sort of slips around here so yeah. it fits really tight and looks really nice. So. so so, if you know pipe work, think of it like notching a pipe where you're joining two together like in a T-join, you notch one to fit over the other. I'm going to do the same on this so it fits the curve of this um, six inch pipe or whatever this diameter pipe is here. So. And Dana explained yesterday when we were talking about how this is going to attach to the um, the wheelhouse roof. He's saying he's going to cut a hole in the roof itself, and he's going to weld this in and on a plate. Um, and the purpose is that it's like that's how big the hole is. Yeah. The wild wires are going to come out into the wheelhouse, so we're going to have lots of lots of ease of. So you stick your whole wires. you stick your whole arm right up inside it. <laughs> yeah. Like if you need to pull a wire down, mm. someone can feed it from the outside and then you can reach right up and grab it. Well, no, we can't because we're short. Ryan can. Ryan can. Yeah, gorilla, Ryan's got that job. Gorilla Ryan can reach up and <laughs> grab the wire and pull it back down. Yeah. 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 And then because of that, we were talking about because most of the these things aren't really. Um, rust protected on the inside on the commercial boats around here um, but we were thinking we need to when they can I'm sure they do when they can have the time but um, we're going to make sure that it's really well painted because, and partly because it's going to be a hole that's enclosed that yeah. you know goes up in the wheelhouse um, you don't want rust chips and things starting to fall down so yeah. we've got to make sure that it's really well protected on the inside so. I just had a thought mm -hmm. we're going to have a big hole in the middle of the roof in the wheelhouse which isn't going to have insulation apart from a little bit covering over top I'm just thinking I might try and jam some insulation up here when I've got it mounted yeah, like yeah, you could, stuff, yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah. Stuff blocks polystyrene yeah, yeah, up at the try and sure, yeah. stop some of the. It'd be great if you get like a tube like sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. But I suppose squishing it up is a better option. Not that it makes a huge amount. I mean, I only have to come up like a foot. Now, what's it called? A thermal bridge? That'll be a massive thermal bridge. Move it in ice. Yeah. I think, and, and like um, Tim suggested um, ages ago about any any holes like that, just have a, a, a like a, a polystyrene thing that we can just plug things, so yeah. like plug windows or plug holes, so that might be a plug, that's what it might need a... Yeah, yeah, like a block that we yeah. just put up, yeah. yeah, but I reckon we put the block up and leave it there, like don't, don't yeah. have it take out, you know, like just... Yeah, if it's easy enough to pull out and put another wire and then just yeah. put it back up yeah. again, yeah. And so it doesn't matter cool. if you destroy the polystyrene every time you have to do a wire, because you only do a wire every couple of years or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's... Um, starting to come along so I'll I like yeah. the angles I think the angles yeah. are very cool they're wider than I thought but I think they'll look in proportion once they're up there okay if I made it small I think they'd look silly yeah it's so it's so long really, yeah isn't it it's for the Wi-Fi aerials are you gonna have it like a, um, some, a, a sort of I don't know. like a plate or something no like something a pipe or something that'll hold the weight of the end no. You're gonna leave it hanging out. Yes, I won't need to. Are you gonna have something bracing in here? Or? I won't. No, I won't need to either. Seriously? It's six mil steel. If that starts drooping, we've got bigger <laughs> problems. <laughs> so you're trusting your welds that much? Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Are you not? It's gonna get. No, no, no. I <laughs> <laughs> no, your welds are very good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a subtle? Hmm. Can we consider some bracing? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. You fucking weld it. <laughs> well, give it to me then, I'll do it. Whatever. <laughs> no, your welds are better than mine, by far. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to um, 
uh, make the other plate. I'm going to well, weld this in. I'll make the other plate, um, and then I'm going to blast this, the welds, the underside of the other plate. Put that in, and then I'm going to weld that up. So you're lighting on the outside and on the inside. Yeah, because I can't get the inside. Then I'm going to. Um, Cut my holes, and in fact, I might even cut the holes first because then yeah, I can I was just thinking that way you'd be yeah. easier, yeah. So I'll cut my holes and, and put these in. Um, so what my plan is, so I've got I've got four of these and one, and one of these. Um, oh, it's lost its prettiness. It's lost its prettiness. Oh no! It's still, it no. was going to always lose it. You might not be able to see it. There's some <laughs> splatter, well splatter. Um, so these are just, like them all perfect. <laughs> so these are just three quarter BSP um, <laughs> threaded pipe fittings. Um, and I'm using these because the aerials and things that we have, most of them have ba will basically screw straight onto this and if they don't, um, it's a really common size so I can build an adapter. So if I have to go down a size or whatever it is, I can just get a couple of fittings and then weld them together or whatever it may be and actually just make an adapter. But because it's a BS tapered BSP fitting, um, I can you know throw a bit of thread tape on there and then screw whatever it is, an area or something on there and I know I've got a, a watertight seal. Mm. Um, so I don't ever have to worry about free oxygen getting in and out of this pipe easily. Um, I also don't have to worry about... Um, like free oxygen makes it rust faster. Yeah, so if you've got unpainted mild steel, if it's in a completely sealed tank, you don't actually have to paint it and, and it will rust to a point and then it will stop. And you can leave it like that for 40 years and have no issues whatsoever. Um, if you open that tank and leave it open, that's when you start having issues because fresh oxygen gets back in, touches the steel and, and starts rusting. And you can see it all the time around the boat. It, even if over three years, like you can really see the difference between no oxygen spaces and, yeah. and then, you know, they've, they've got access to oxygen. To yeah. give you an idea of that, have a look at our video. There's a link in the corner now. Gives you an idea as to um, what a tank that's been sealed for 40 odd years looks like. Um, you know, what we opened it up just to double check it was all good in there. And um, yeah, it's a similar sort of thing. Like there's a, there was a lot of unpainted steel, and yeah, 40 years later, no issues. So, um, and also, curious. that concrete actually really works as a great stop for rust. Just if, the, if it's if it's enclosed the space, they can, yeah. where it's against the steel, and it's uh, amazing. Yeah, we've seen it a few places around here because yeah. some people have told us really quite strongly that. You shouldn't yeah. be using concrete um, because we're going to use that for weighting the boat down. There's a lot of myths around cement in boats, like yeah. cement in a steel boat. Like, yeah, there's a lot of myths that it's a bad thing. Um, I can personally say, having chipped out 40-year-old cement from our coffer dam, um, the steel underneath was absolutely immaculate. But the steel was perfect. Yeah. There was no bubbles. That, there was no air gaps. Nothing. There was no cracks. So yeah. it was really great cement. Obviously, that went in. So yeah. I think it depends on the quality of. And it, it, it doesn't crack. It, like people people get worried that boats move and bend and all that, and it, and it cracks cement. It doesn't. Like if well, a boat. Well, again, it depends on the cement. Yeah, that's that's probably true. If Thickness, a, all sorts of. If a boat's moving so much that it's going to crack cement, there's probably other problems. <laughs> I would suggest. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, okay. Yeah, anyway. I'll leave you to it down. Yeah. So yes, it's right. looking great. I, I love. I really hadn't even thought about how to get that angle. You know, that tilt back like a. Yeah, yeah, plane wing. Plane wing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I'll get this welded up and then um, yeah, we we'll get into it. Would always shine when we sat there, you and I. The river's gonna cry when you're gone, 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 gone. The river's gonna cry when you're gone, gone.